Hello again, it's your girl Spectre and I'm here to finish off what I started. Today, we'll be looking at the remaining A ranks for Shadowbringers, going over their mechanics in the hopes that it will help you die a little less while you're out hunting. Friendly reminder that this video will contain footage that are spoilers for the recent expansion, and if you have not finished the story, I would suggest returning to this video once you have. For all those who have contained the light, killed him itself, otherwise known as Hades, and watched Dinos killed his dad, let's dive right in. First off, we'll take a look at the Mudman, a three-star hunt who means business. You'll recognize him as the last boss of St. Machian's Arboretum Hard, where he's retained his skills for the most part. If you want to stay alive, you've got to pay attention, even if his moveset is simple. Let's take a look. What will make Mudman a breeze is paying attention to his cast bar. We'll start off with Feculent Flood, a telegraphed conal AoE. At the time of making this video, it does high, lethal damage. Like most conal attacks, the further away you are from the boss, the harder it is to dodge, and he does cast it quite fast. I would suggest that if you're ranged, staying about mid-range away from the Mudman. However, being close does mean you will have to pay attention to the next mechanic. Bog Bequest is a donut AoE attack with no telegraph. You can move directly under the Mudman to safety if you are melee. If you are ranged, you can also move in, but have the second option of moving far out of attack range as well. Bog Bequest is followed by Royal Flush, a circular AoE around the Mudman, meaning you'll want to get away. Both of these attacks do high to lethal damage. In short, Bog Bequest means move in, and Royal Flush means move out. Gravity Force places an AoE marker on a random target. It can be silenced using moves like Interject. If not silenced, it inflicts light damage and a heavy debuff, meaning all inside will have trouble dodging any of Mudman's other attacks. If the attack isn't silenced, make sure to move it away from other players to minimize death. Other than that, that's all there is to the Mudman. Make sure you're paying attention and aren't mindlessly pressing your buttons, and you won't be another casualty. Let's move on to the other Fairyland A rank, and my personal favorite, Oporus Paldia, or as I call her, Paula. Paula originally came from the drowned city of Scala, where she awaits you as the last boss. And much like her Fairyland counterpart, she retains most of her moves from there as well. I'd give Paula three stars too. Much like Hurricane, she can pose quite the challenge, you just have to pay attention to where you're standing. What also makes Paula difficult is most of her attacks do not have cast bars, and you must pay attention to Paula herself. If you see Paula raise her claws, you need to move from in front of her as she then attacks with a large AoE in the front. If you see her turn and crouch, Move from in front of her as well, as she'll soon fire a huge laser AoE. If she leans over and raises her tail, get from behind her, as she will strike with a huge backwards AoE. All of these moves do high to lethal damage, and apply stacks of vulnerability up if hit. Paula's last attack is the spin, a donut AoE. This one attack has a cast bar, but no telegraph, much like her other attacks. You can also tell she's about to spin if she gets down on all fours and wiggles her tail. If you're in melee range, move underneath her, and if you are ranged, you can move out of attack distance or underneath her as well. One last thing to add is that in big crowds, Paula likes to walk, and will target random players to move to, meaning that if you're not paying attention, Paula will make sure you're not as safe as you think you are. Leaving Ilmeg behind, let's take a look at Supe who you might recognize as a trash mob from the Alliance Raid, the Orban Monastery. Much like its counterparts there, you just have to make sure you're not looking too hard into Supe's many eyes, making this hunt a lovely one star. Supe has one gig and one gig only. Be on the lookout for Blasphemous Howl, an AoE marker on a random player. It inflicts an incleansable terror debuff on all inside and cannot be silenced. Immediately after Blasphemous Howl, Supe will cast Petro Eyes, using the familiar mechanic in which you must turn your character away from the boss. If you have the Howl AoE marker, and or are unfortunate enough to be caught in it, make sure to also turn away from the boss, as you won't be able to move. If you didn't turn around in time for Petro Eyes, you will then gain a Petrification debuff, where you won't be able to move for 15 seconds. 
Petrified players then get the joy of getting pecked to death, as you cannot move from Supe's lethal beak axe attack. If no one is petrified, then the attack does not do lethal damage. Other than that, you can bully this bird to death, but we can't say the same for his zone partner, Grassman. You've seen Grassman many places before. As a B rank, as multiple bosses, for even if his appearance has changed, the skeleton gets used quite a lot. At a lovely 3 stars, you'll want to bring your best healers and your beefiest tanks to take down this ape, for this hunt isn't monkeying around. Starting off slow, be on the lookout for Stool Pelt, a telegraphed AoE that is targeted at a random player. Just move out of the way. Grassman has a tank buster called Browbeat. Use your cooldowns and heal as necessary. Streak is an attack where a Grassman will face a random player and dash toward them. Both the dash and the end of it do high to lethal damage, so make sure to move out of the way. Grassman's heavy hitting attack is called Chest Thump, a raid wide attack. With each cast, he gains a stack of damage up, making you take more damage than the last hit. Be ready to dish out the heals for your party members when this attack goes off. Most often, as well, he will use Browbeat afterwards while still holding on to his damage buffs, so tanks be ready to pop some cooldowns. Grassman can be a pain to deal with in small crowds, so make sure you're up for the challenge before taking him on. Moving to the last zone, let's take a look at Ruzalka. You've seen her as an overworld mob many times before, but now she's finally upgraded to an A rank. Ruzalka is an easy one-star hunt, but there's not much to look out for. Still be careful though, as she's got some tricks up her sleeves. As I said before, Rizalka is fairly simple. Her two main attacks are Hydro Cannon and Ethereal Spark. Hydro Cannon is a telegraph circular AoE targeted at a random player. Simply move out of the way. Ethereal Spark is a telegraph AoE, but don't quote me at this, it's targeted on the main tank. Both attacks give stacks of Vuln up if you are hit. Rizalka likes to sneak in Ethereal Pull, a move that, as advertised, pulls in players directly underneath her. Immediately after, she casts Flood, which has no cast bar or telegraph. If you're unlucky enough to get pulled in, make sure to move out of melee range immediately, as this attack does high to lethal damage. Ethereal Pull can be avoided with anti-knockback moves such as Sure Cast or Arm's Length. Similar to Shugar, a greater number of players might mean that you don't get pulled in at all. If you're looking for a good time without much difficulty, Rizalka's your gal. Last but not least is my boy Ball. If he doesn't look familiar, think of those Ochus you've seen in the Black Shroud. Ball is a lovely 2 star, but while his moveset isn't difficult, everyone's gotta pay attention or else you get dunked on. Ball usually likes to start off with sewer water a small circular telegraphed AoE. He'll usually hit one side first, and then the other. These do give stacks of vulnerability up if you are hit. Ball's main shtick is Sewage Wave, which is like sewer water, but bigger than before. This time, however, only the first half is telegraphed. Once done casting, he will attack the side that was telegraphed, and then immediately attack the other half, which has no telegraph. If you are melee, prepare to move side to side. If you are ranged, you can also simply run out of range of the attack. That's all I've got for now, and I'd like to thank you all for joining me. This certainly won't be my last video, as I have some others planned for the future. Please look forward to it. Thank you to all the people who helped me get the footage I needed to make this video, and a special thank you to Bellatrist Grimm for helping me have all the necessary info on mechanics as well. If you'd like to read more of her hump information, i put a link to her website in the description below. In the meantime and in between time, I hope you'll share this with your friends and die a little less out in the field. This has been your girl Spectre, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting.